Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Today, we're taking a look at the 30th edition, Dear God, What Are We Doing With Our Lives, of what I like to call What I Eat Wednesdays, where we take a look at some of those What I Eat in a Day as a Fat Person videos on TikTok. 30 episodes deep. The Big 3-0. Who would have thought that we could make it this far? It just goes to show that the old adage is true. Just put your faith in the mustache and everything will be okay. Maybe. That might be a saying somewhere. In today's video, we have a couple of somewhat Christmas-themed What I Eat videos. By the way, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to all of you that are watching. Hopefully you all get all the presents that you wanted. Me? All I need is you. Your subscription is the only present that I need. Wholesome, huh? To prepare myself for all the Yule tithing? Yule tide? There's a Yule log or something? I don't understand what the hell is going on with that. We must first apply comb to mustache. What I eat in a day as a woman who eats for a family of four. What I eat in a day as a woman who eats for a family of four on Christmas Eve. On Christmas Eve. So everyone went mad last time that I had a donut for breakfast. I thought, oh my gosh, I can never do that again. So don't worry, I had two donuts for breakfast. <laughs> Oh, I respect the hell out of that, Chloe. So everyone went mad last time when you had a donut for breakfast. So you had two donuts for breakfast this time. <laughs> I respect the hell out of that, Chloe. If we were going off of taste alone, a donut would indeed be an amazing breakfast. Have y'all ever had a maple bar with bacon on it? Oh, man. Now we're not screwing around anymore and we're getting right to the point. Um, these are the Morrison's custard ones and they were 14 pence, so bargain. They were only 14 pence? That is a bargain. And then once I finished work at 2, I had my lunch. So I had two sandwiches with fake chicken and fake cheese. And then we went round to my mum's. Alright, looks like you're really enjoying that sandwich. <laughs> looks like you just saw a ghost, man. <laughs> She's like, ah! The ghost of Christmas past is here to haunt me again. <laughs> Alright, so you had two fake chicken, fake cheese sandwiches. That's gonna cost you. By the look on your face, you weren't supposed to eat those sandwiches. Those were somebody else's sandwiches, and then you started eating them, and that person came around the corner right when you were in the middle of eating their sandwich. You're like, ah! Oh. For our Christmas Eve dinner, I'll dinner, some Domino's pizza, and I tried out these multi-bites. Like, I don't know, eight-ish, and had Domino's. Okay, if you back. All right, love you too. Bye. Let's take a look at this sucker and add it up. All right, so you started the day off with two custard donuts. I swear there are plenty of people who are malnourished that are actually obese. They eat the kinds of food and the volume of food to make themselves larger but there's no nutrition in it whatsoever. Isn't that ironic as hell? So you started the day off with two blood sugar spikes right to the cranium and liver. And then later on for lunch, you had two fake chicken, fake cheese sandwiches. I'm not sure what was in that fake chicken or that fake cheese, but I doubt it was comparable from a nutrition standpoint to the real thing. Then later on for dinner, you had some Domino's pizza which is a bunch of processed carbs and feel-good chemicals. And by feel-good, I mean feel-good for 10 minutes and then feel bad. And then for dessert, you had some multi-bites. Not a whole lot of volume on this particular day, unless you ate like the whole pizza. All right, after much deliberation, I have come to a decision. On this particular day, I'm gonna give this one a one out of 10. We might be experiencing some underreporting in this episode as well, or these types of foods are just so bad for you that you don't even need to eat a lot of it. Next. What I eat in a day, Christmas party edition. I was feeling the festive vibes this morning, so I started off. <laughs> oh man, look at that Santa Claus pancake. I've got to give you an A for your artistic expression on this one. Speaking of art, if you have any fan art of me that you would like to share, then why don't you stop on by the Discord server I've created a channel in there called Fan Art for just such occasions. This is very festive. 
with a Santa pancake. How cute. Tuna. That was cute. Pasta for lunch. And then it was my. What was that? Tuna pasta? Tuna pasta for lunch. And then. All right, tuna pasta. It's like tuna noodle casserole like we have over here. Looked like tuna noodle casserole to me. And then you ate this gigantic pile of candy and chips and soda. <laughs> what is this? It was my hoochmus bring a ball party. Look at all the food. I was pink and I put on this absolutely gorgeous Christmas spread. All right, that does look pretty darn good. We got some meats and cheeses and crackers. And then we've got a bunch of cookies and candies. And then what do you got up there? Coffee, maybe tea. Have you seen anything so stunning? Okay, and then you're gonna eat this plate of stuff right here? All right, is she gonna describe every single thing that's on this plate, or am I gonna have to try to figure it out? Because I'm seeing a lot of stuff here. I'm seeing what I believe is a bread pudding on the left there, and then some sort of pastries on the bottom. They look pretty good. They look like those lady finger things. What are those things? They have the ridges in them, and they're all puffy. And then I see various other cookies, and on the top left, a bowl of gravy to dip it all in. What the heck? You guys are going off the rails over there. This is your sign to put roasties, Yorkshires, and dipping gravy on your Christmas spread. It was Yorkshires. Oh, is that Yorkshire pudding right there? Is that really gravy and you're dipping it in it? It was literally unreal. Oh, right, hold on. Let me go back. Sign to put roasties, Yorkshires, and dipping gravy on your Christmas spread. It was Something gravy on your Christmas spread. It was literally unreal. We had mini pies, pigs in blankets. I was just joking around by calling that gravy, but it actually was gravy. <laughs> I had pigs in a blanket as well. Cheese boards. And I also got mini sausage and stuffing rolls. Cheese board, mini sausage and stuffing rolls. How stunning. What is your favorite cheese at Christmas? Mine's definitely brie. Actually, I do love Wensley Dale and cranberry as well. All right, I'm not a fan of brie. I like cheddar and Swiss. Cheddar, I think, is the best cheese known to man. Of course, I am from the West Coast. We drank loads of hooch. My fave was definitely the pink hooch. I did you had some pink hooch. Is that like alcohol? Is that an alcoholic drink? Go give me my bottle of hooch. <laughs> That's like some redneck stuff, what they call alcohol. <laughs> get a little bit drunk so get ready for the hungover edition tomorrow and then okay that was alcohol <laughs> you guys call it hooch as well and we had some of the snacks off the boards have all right and then you had some candy I haven't had pink panthers in years all right so i don't think this person underreported at all i think they were very honest with what they ate for that day unlike a lot of people let's take a look and add it up all right, so Santa's sleigh crashed into the chimney a little early this year, and we got festive with some Santa Claus pancake action. His hat was made of strawberries, folks. All right, here's what we do to make that a little more healthy. We ditch the strawberries, and we use beef blood to make the top of his hat red. Just kidding, folks. But would it have killed you to give him a sausage nose or some bacon eyes? All right, and then later on, you had some tuna pasta. That can be pretty good, as long as we don't have too many noodles in that sucker, and we got plenty of tuna. And then, everything went down a dark, dark path, my friend. Christmas started turning into Halloween, and we got a witch's spell cast on us, making us consume pastries, cookies, and gravy. No, there's nothing wrong with gravy. That shit is dank, son. Then you had some pigs in a blanket, and a cheese board. I love those cheese boards with the cheese and the wacky little meats, you friggin' goofballs. And then you had some mini sausage and stuffing rolls. Sounds like it might be okay. And then you finally decided to stop messing about and have some pink hooch. And you chased the pink hooch with some candy, some pink panthers. I've never had that one. I'm guessing it's some sort of strawberry spread inside of wafer cookies. Anyway, I digress. On this particular day, I'm going to have to give this one a 2 out of 10. That would have got a better rating if not for all the cookies and pastries in there. Like I've said before, that deletes some of the good points that I was going to give you. I don't make the rules. I just enforce them to a psychotic level. Next. What I eat in a day is a fat person who intuitively eats to recover from a restrictive ED. All right, so this person is saying that they are recovering from a restrictive ED, therefore they are intuitively eating. Let me ask all my viewers who are recovering from a restrictive ED, is it ever a good idea to exchange one ED for another? Like you used to not eat enough, now you eat too much of the wrong things. 
Is that something that you guys strive for? You're just like, as long as I get some kind of food in me, it doesn't matter if I become obese. Or do you guys just try to form a healthy relationship with food and eat what is healthy in an attempt to have a healthier life? You tell me, I don't know. For breakfast, I had a vegan bagel with eggs and avocado. A vegan bagel with eggs and avocado. All right, I'm guessing what makes it vegan is that it has vegan eggs. For second breakfast, I got a vanilla latte from Starbucks, and I also got a grilled cheese that I did not like. And For second breakfast, you got a vanilla latte from Starbucks and a grilled cheese. Second breakfast. <laughs> If you want to class this joint up a little bit, you'll call it brunch. It sounds so fancy that it lends legitimacy to your problem. <laughs> You're like, what? I'm not drinking first thing in the morning. Well, I am, but uh, this is Prosecco, so it's, it's lending legitimacy to this whole alcoholism thing. And I realized I just didn't have to eat it, so I didn't. Oh, so you didn't eat it. You started to taste it and it was gross, so you didn't eat it. What's up with some of them doing that? They try to make it a point to be like, I tried this thing and it was gross, so I didn't eat it. That's kind of weird. You know, when I go out to eat somewhere and I order food, even if it sucks, um, I still eat it. Am I the only one? I know that all of you do the same exact thing. You eat it and you're like, oh, this sucks. But I paid for it and uh, there's nothing else for me to eat in this particular moment, so I guess I'm going to eat it. <laughs> Especially back when I was larger, my tastes were a lot less exclusive. Before I got in the pool, I ate some leftover pasta with shrimp, and I. Before you got out of the pool? Before I got in the pool, I ate some leftover pasta with shrimp. All right, I'm pretty sure she did say before I got out of the pool, I ate some pasta with shrimp. <laughs> Living a life of luxury, man. Eating in the pool. That honestly sounds pretty dope. I've seen pictures of bars like in the Florida Keys before where you swim up to the bar. The bar stool is like partially submerged under the ocean. Man, that would be dope. And I also ate a salad with a bunch of berries and fruit on top. You ate a salad with a bunch of berries and fruit on top. That is a bizarre combination of things. <laughs> Why do you have the fruit in with the lettuce? What the heck? Is this a thing? Is this a fruit salad, dog? <laughs> I don't think this is what they meant when they said fruit salad. You know that a fruit salad is when you just put a bunch of different kinds of fruit together, right? They literally took some lettuce and then put fruit on top of it. <laughs> I swear to God, they're going for a fruit salad right here. My grandmother brought me this little pastry thing, so I ate that afterwards. Your grandmother brought you this little pastry thing, so you ate that afterwards. Before lunch, I snacked on some watermelon. Before lunch, you had some watermelon. And then I had California rolls for lunch. Not one, but two, because they were on sale. All right, you had two packages of California rolls for lunch. You know what makes those rolls California rolls? They cost more. <laughs> That's it, it just costs more. <laughs> because I can. Did you say because I can? Dude, I swear to God. Anybody who uses that phrase immediately looks like they have the maturity of a five-year-old. Because I can't. Like, you're sticking it to somebody by sticking it to yourself. You're only sticking it to yourself. Then my employers treated me to ice cream, and it was my favorite flavor, but I just wasn't feeling it. It was your favorite flavor, but you just weren't feeling it. Yeah, like I said, in a lot of these, they talk about how I didn't like it, so I didn't finish it or whatever. Which, as I said, is some pretty bizarre behavior. I think people are just trying to be like, see, I'm not an alcoholic. I only drank one beer. I think it's all for show when people make a what I eat in a day as a fat person video and then talk about how they didn't really like the food or eh, it wasn't that good so I didn't finish it. I would have finished it. I would have finished all that crap even if it was gross. And then I realized I've come so far in my intuitive eating that I just didn't need to eat this. Like You've come so far in your intuitive eating that you didn't need to eat this. What was actually dumped down the drain was like just the bottom part of that. I didn't want it. I wasn't in the mood so I didn't have to have it. All right, so how much money are you going to waste? Earlier you had a grilled cheese that you then said you didn't want, even though it was already a second breakfast. My recommendation is don't go for a second breakfast at all. And then you bought some ice cream and then threw part of it away as well. My recommendation is to not buy uh, the ice cream. Listen to your intuition before you swipe your credit card and pay for the damn thing. <laughs> Go ahead and check in with your intuition beforehand and be like, should I buy this? Can I afford to just buy food and then throw it in the garbage immediately? Can I just say how liberating that felt? Now just guess what my brother surprised me with for dinner. 
Okay, and then you had more California rolls or sushi rolls or whatever for dinner. Might I recommend that if we're recovering from a restrictive ED that we just get up to a healthy weight and then just eat healthy. We don't just eat a bunch of garbage. Also, eating a bunch of heavily processed and sweet food is going to jack up your hunger signals and contribute to binge eating as well as wanting to purge afterwards. So there's a damn good reason to eat healthy whether you're recovering from a binge ED or a restrictive ED. And if it was a restrictive ED, you know that the way you used to eat when you were just eating like bites of popcorn and nibbling on broccoli was not healthy either. So that doesn't count as healthy eating. I'm not encouraging you to go down the path of freaking out and obsessing about what you eat all the time. I'm just saying, healthy eating is healthy eating. It can go both ways. Let's take a look and add it up. All right, so you started the day off with a vegan bagel, as you called it, which was a bagel, avocado, and vegan eggs. Then, for second breakfast, which is a term I think we all needed in our lives, you had vanilla latte and a grilled cheese. You took a bite or two of the grilled cheese, and then you said you didn't want it and threw it away. The first wasted food of the day, if that happened. Then later on, you were swimming in the pool and decided to have some pasta and shrimp while you were in the pool. You couldn't wait until you got out of the pool, so you went ahead and had a plate of food and let it just float around in the water. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just imagining somebody like with a plate of food stepping down into the water as if the water wasn't there and then the food just starts floating up off the plate and then they start bobbing for the food like they're bobbing for apples. And then later on you did something that I've never seen before and you put some fruit on some lettuce, <laughs> which was really weird, man. And then your grandmother gave you a little pastry thing. You had some watermelon, two packages of California rolls, some ice cream, and some sushi rolls. All right, I've come to a decision. On this particular day, I'm gonna have to give this one a three out of 10. All right, I was feeling a little generous on that one. There was some fruit, there was some shrimp, there was a lot of bad stuff, but there were a couple of okay things too. Meh. Next, what I eat in a day as a fat person who is not on a diet. By a calm. Sorry, I've always wanted to do that. All right, Zoe, take it easy. A tea with milk and sugar. A breakfast bowl. All right, what do we got here? It looks like we've got some egg, perhaps some ham, and some sort of carb looking thing. Another tea at my mom's. Leftover capoletti for lunch. All right, I don't know what capoletti is, but I'm going to assume that it's the same as all Italian food. It's pasta, tomato sauce, and some kind of cheese or meat. All right, so I just looked it up. It is stuffed with something. I don't know what, but some kind of cheese or meat or something. Just like tortellini. some veggies, and dip. Some cheese. A glass of wine. That's a pretty big glass. That looks like my wine glass. <laughs> my wine glass takes up half the bottle. Just one glass, huh? And then what'd you do? Throw the rest of the bottle away? Stop. Stop. Oh, okay. So you're not supposed to fill the thing all the way to the top? <laughs> hmm, that's interesting. <laughs> Why do they make the glass so big then? I always fill it all the way to the top. It takes up half the damn bottle. Pizza and salad. Those are some comically small pizza slices. Is that one of those frozen pizzas? A couple Christmas cookies. A vitamin C immunity drink. Did I bet you vitamin C isn't even good for you? Which is why there's so much emphasis on it. <laughs> Am I the only one that thinks that vitamin C is likely a scam? 
it's just too widely available and there's too much stuff saying that it's good for you so it couldn't possibly be <laughs> am i just being too cynical now Anywho, let's take a look at this and add it up. All right, so the first thing you consumed today was tea with milk and sugar. I would not recommend breaking your fast with sugar. And that is what breakfast is. You're breaking your fast for the night. Just as we don't want to break our longer fast with garbage food, but instead with healthy food, we also want to do the same for our break fast, for our break fast in the morning. Then you had some ham, eggs, and carbs. Not sure what those carbs were, but that looked like a pretty decent dish. Then you had yourself some more tea. Get some more of that sugar up into your veins, love. And then you had some Capoletti, which is Tortellini's bastard brother. <laughs> Tortellini is the good son, and Capoletti is that son that never gets invited to the Christmas party. I'm just kidding. I don't know what the hell that is, really. It's just some sort of stuffed noodle thing. Then you had some veggies and dip. Nothing inherently wrong with that unless that dip was ranch, which what else could it be? Who dips their veggies in anything other than ranch? Then you had some cheese, classic. Then you had what I consider a third of a glass of wine, let's be real. Am I the only one that fills the whole stupid glass up? By the way, I'm not encouraging drinking. Personally, I try to keep it to very rare occasions now. Then later on, you had some pizza and salad. Then for dessert, you had Christmas cookies and a vitamin C drink. All right, I have reached a decision, Zoe. I'm going to give your day a 3 out of 10. It would have been higher except for the cookies, the wine, and the sugar in those teas. Those deleted some of your points. And that's about all we have time for today. Thank you very much for tuning in. Oh yeah, you can also DM your fan art to me on Instagram. Here's a link. Anyway... That about does it. Thanks for watching, commenting, liking, and subscribing. And I'll see you in the next one.